1991-92 academic year, Ball State University focused attention on the European community through numerous lectures, events, and activities. A symposium for Indiana business leaders interested in exploring European markets was the grand kickoff event. The European community's ambassador to the United States, Andreas Van Ocht, brought to Indiana the opportunities that exist in international to trade. To reconcile once and forever France and Germany, countries that had gone to war with one another three times in just over one century. Guest speakers were also featured in a nationwide teleconference. U.S. Senator Richard Luger and Representative Lee Hamilton joined consuls general from Denmark, Germany, and the Netherlands. Architecture students transformed the quadrangle into a European village. The outdoor festival featured cultural samplings from European community countries. Spectators even got the opportunity to try their skills at Bogenschieten, an archery sport from Belgium. The festival's activities were topped off by floatovers of the European community's hot air balloon in its maiden U.S. voyage. Homecoming combined the European theme with annual domestic fanfare. World-renowned comedian Red Skelton was the highlight entertainment. The, they're standing on the beach together, the two seagulls. Which is, uh, <laughs> they stand here, and their little friend, the sparrow, comes up, and he's limping. And he's got a broken leg and not a feather on him. I got a broken wing and, and not a feather on him. And he says, what on earth happened to you? He says, oh, I was flying low over the athletic club. And I got in the damnedest badminton game you ever thought. You know? <laughs> During homecoming, it wasn't the roar of engines, but the roar of the crowd as bed racers dragged down McKinley Avenue. The lip sync contest and talent shows let the students show off and have fun. Of course, it wouldn't be homecoming without the crowning of the queen. The year saw the opening of Ball State's crown jewel, University Arena. President John Worthen and Provost Warren Vanderhill first opened the 11,500-seat facility to a university convocation, where goals in the Ball State 2000 program were announced. Days later, the public saw its first athletic action in the arena when a doubleheader basketball game pitted Ball State men's and women's teams against Miami of Ohio. The sellout crowd made a spectacular opening night as shot after shot set the nets ablaze. How has the first day in the arena gone? Well, so far so good. I mean, the operational equipment has all been functional. Everything worked through the women's game and uh, you know, I think people are looking at pleasantly uh, good surroundings, uh, facilities, uh, concessions, restrooms, everything's been operational. So as long as the boards work, we can play this game. That's fine with me. I think what they've been able to do here architecturally is get people so close to the court um, and, uh, and every seat face the court that it's going to be, we're still going to have some of that intimacy that we had over in Irving Gym. And people don't realize that. They see such a big building and say, we're going to lose something here. And I don't think we're going to lose anything. The University Arena is also home to volleyball and gymnastics competitions. The tennis duo of Dan Cronegie and Paul Cruz earned Ball State's first national sports title. The doubles team won the Volvo Challenge. Victories were also seen in the men's swim team as they gained an 11-0 perfect season record. Women's field hockey traveled to North Carolina as the Stick Chicks battled the Duke Blue Devils and North Carolina Tar Heels. Along with Ball State's achievements on the field and court, athletes continue to keep the classroom their number one priority. Football free safety Troy Hoffer was named a GTE Academic All-American. The junior health science major boasted a GPA of 3.93. It's said mimicry is the truest form of flattery. Visitors to the Netherlands brought home t-shirts emblazoned with the Ball State logo. Although it looked like Ball State in many ways, the foreign translation wound up Ball County, California. Officials would like royalties on all shirts sold in Europe, but U.S. copyright laws don't reach that far. A Ball State archaeology team excavated a 150-year-old canal lock that was once part of the Wabash and Erie Canal. The dig near Fort Wayne added dimension to the traditional classroom work of student Allison Bennett. You can't learn how to put in a, a, a level 
from a textbook, you know, you could say you have to do it 10 centimeters or whatever, but until you actually get out here and have to work with the learning what 10 centimeters is and stuff, you just, you can't really learn as much from a, the books and stuff. Although the fate of the uncovered lock rests with state officials, the wealth of hands-on experience in such a project has been realized by many students and faculty. Teaching the on-the-campus classroom continues its stretch to Fort Benjamin Harrison and Grissom Air Force Base. During the day, senior airman Jeff Lowe inventories aircraft parts at Grissom for shipping. After he puts in his hours for the Air Force, he becomes a Ball State student. Jeff says he may not have gone to college if not for such courses that Ball State provides. The reason why I didn't go straight into college after high school, I didn't have the deter determination and uh, self-discipline to uh, get what I needed out of uh, education. So in the military, it pretty much gave me that. Teaching took to the water in Ball State's push to provide opportunities for the disabled. The physical education department conducted a skiing clinic for several disabled Ball State students. Specially designed skis gave students like Tim Atha the lift needed. Around 200 athletes from the United States, Canada, and Australia met at Ball State for the 1992 U.S. Paralympic Invitational. Blind and cerebral palsied swimmers and track and field athletes practiced and competed before going to the International Paralympics in Barcelona, Spain. Our thoughts is every two to four years do a large scale competition like that. Uh, the feedback we received today has been outstanding. Uh, the facilities is good. The dorm food is good, which is really surprising. <laughs> um, again, the accessibility issues, the, the, the sport facilities is what really sells Ball State. When you're able to use our track and the condition it's in, which is basically a, a world track, uh, the athletes just love it. And so we're able to provide top-notch facilities and personnel to run an event like this. So we're, you know, we would consider going on either a, a two or four year schedule. The two-day competition saw eight world records set in women's swimming and one world record in women's track. The people, programs, and activities of Ball State enhanced the lives of those in the university family during 1991-92. Ball State said goodbye this year to Robert Bell, president of the university from 1981 to 1984, who died at age 73. Bell, a Ball State alumnus, once earned 25 cents an hour polishing the floors of the same administration building where he would later serve. The Bell presidency was the culmination of 37 years of service to Ball State as a professor, department chairman, dean, and vice president. Bell, like many others, left a legacy of programs and achievements that today make Ball State a premier teaching university.